Yo, what up guys, it's your boy Victor Santana. I'm here at Farmers Brands, about to go meet up with Gavin and Rodrigo out of Three Nations, do a podcast with them, have a lot of fun. Haven't hung out with Gavin since uh, Observer Fest last year, 2018. So it's been a minute. Super excited, they got a lot of big things going on. Uh, they move into possibly move into a bigger facility next year, the year after that, but I don't know when that's gonna happen. I'm super excited, I wanna talk to them about it. And plus the beers they got coming out soon. So let's just hurry up and jump right into it and let's go talk to Gavin and Rodrigo. The center frame. Look over there, Joby. Joby, over here. See over there? Look over there. Look over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good girl. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Welcome, guys, to another week of Drunk Republic. I know you see my face really close to the camera, but I just want to get all of us in it. So I just want to introduce everybody. We got, <laughs> I was almost forgot to say Dom. Gavin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dom, I'll take Dom. He's a likable uh, character. Kind of, is he though? He cut his hair. A little bit. Little bit. Yeah, he should have done that. Should have done that, Dom. No, I know. It was so All whatever. strength's gone now. I know it is. I'm going to go see him around no more. Exactly. <laughs> no, so we got the head brewer, uh, Gavin from Three Nations. It's been over a year and a half since he's been on the podcast. And over a year since we hung out. Last time we hung out was Observer Fest last year. Oh my goodness. And then we have the queen star of uh, Perspective Hazy IPA. Jovi. Jovi. Yeah. We saw in the intro. Hey, Joby. Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, IPA in a second. There's some proceeds that go to a very special organization. And then we got Rodrigo, the organizer of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> the mastermind besides all the beautiful organization groups out there. That's right. Y'all's Beer Squad. Uh, no, the no, Blue no, Squad. No, no. <laughs> not at all. You, but everywhere I go, y'all see you. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, I get around. I get around. <laughs> you don't I have to say around. it like that. It sounds dirty. I get around. I get around. <laughs> <And> you. <laughs> No, thank you guys for coming on uh, this podcast again. Uh, I told you a little bit off air that you inspired us moving around to actual breweries and getting away from the studio because how much more fun you were in where you felt comfortable because we were strangers when we met. That's true. That and is true. You were very, not like you were boring or uh, quiet, You were very, but you were very direct. You were very talkative, but very direct. Yeah. But when we hung out here, it was more of a family feel. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, I mean, not that I can't, you know, be friends wherever I go, but, you know, first time I met, that kind of thing, and then... It's a weird, dark studio we kinda, made Yeah, big <laughs> yeah, kind of keep it professional, and then, you know, you guys came out here and, you know, kind of, for the most part, speak the same language. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, first time I met Rodrigo was at Observer Fest, and apparently, he had a great time. It was a great time. No, we all had a blast, too. I, uh, shout out to Cordy for, uh, giving me an extra pass that they had from, a uh, Coop phenomenal i had yes. so much fun awesome so much fun but uh yeah again another reason why i don't do live events for all uh, festivals anymore because i live i live event 90 percent of it but if you look at the feed because it stayed on for a day towards the end of it i looked really really drunk <laughs> <laughs> really really bad and i was not these the only happen. one these not things the happen one. oh there were a lot of those it was there. a lot of us there was a lot of yeah, there's a lot of action there it was fun like, Observer Fest was probably my favorite festival last year. That was my first one that year, two years ago. That's yeah. when I met you. Yeah. Wait, hold on. We're talking about 18 or 17? No, 18. 2018. Oh, 18, so that was last year. Okay, so yeah. So less than a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming up on a year ago. Yeah, yeah, That was last year. Okay, so that was, okay. That is the best because, like, okay, I think eight, okay, maybe not the best festival. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and rank them all, but, like, it's, 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 rank, it's yeah. cooling down. It's at nighttime. Um... It's a fun backdrop. You can see, you know, the farmer's market and, and if you look right, the you know, the downtown and all that stuff and it's just cool. You yeah. know what I mean? It's and cool because the only one that's in the city, city like out in the open. Yeah, like in right? yeah, exactly like, it's like it, it feels more open even though you still, obviously it's a ticketed event, you still have to go. It's yeah. urban. Yeah, but it's it, it's urban and it's out in the open. Like yeah. it's less con- it feels less contained than like uh, like Beer Fest. Right? Beer Fest is rough. But here's the thing about uh, why 
I can't, I want to say why I love Oktoberfest. It doesn't have the greatest beer. Like it doesn't have special, unique tapping at them. No, but what it does is allows more people to walk through because they organize their walk through because that's not their first event there because they have farmers brand uh, the farmers market every weekend so they know how to organize a quick and organized walk plan there so it's very streamlined and you got everybody there where you want to see and it's at night it's, it's not so nice, hot man. I know. it's not hot every yeah. other beer fest is at 12 o'clock in the middle of the summertime where are you gonna die you're gonna it's die shout you're out, gonna die man. shout out to uh, austin uh, uh Texas Craft uh, uh, Guild Festival. It's in August. It's in September as well, but it's in the middle of the day. It's in the middle of the day, which is not the hottest part of the year, but it gets hot. It's hot. It gets hot, hot and humid. And so there's, you know, we we work in here uh, in the elements, so to speak. Um, and I mean, gotta be honest, less than I used to, right? Yeah. But um, you know. Jackson and Russell and Will, they're back here. I mean, it gets hot in here. I mean, it's like probably hit 100 a couple times this week or something like that, but heat index is like 115 sometimes. I believe it. So we've got like some, you know, decent airflow, but I mean, it doesn't matter. You're working in these elements I mean, when it's to get hot. You're just blowing the hot air around. Exactly. Yeah. So, but um, something to be said, like, dude, you want to go out in the parking lot and work? Different story. Oh. You're in the sun? No, my no. goodness so the, the beautiful thing about it yes are you in the elements here but you're in shades you have constantly fans from start to finish you have fans everywhere in here have to you have air circling from the back to the side because you get the doors open on all sides yep you have air circling here so you, yes you get you feel the heat of course summertime you feel the cold when it's winter you know but it's airflow it's not in the sun because walking in here when it's during my intro i walked up and down the street during my intro that's hot it's hot. The sun's beating from the concrete, sun's beating from my back. It's hot. Bro, you can cook eggs on that concrete. And imagine a festival in Farmer's Market at nighttime with nothing but concrete. Come on. That's why they do it at night. That's why I love the Observer Fest. Yep. It's awesome. <laughs> and Very I get to hang out with, honestly, not knocking any of the beer festivals I went to last year, any of uh, that I've been to or going in the future. But what I really like about Observer Fest is I've honestly built friendships with everybody who's a brewer here that I hang out with. And people who, who hasn't been on a podcast are my friends. And I get to hang out with people. And I really, really enjoy that. There's something to be said, I think, as well as, like, you know when, like, people, like, have Friday off, like, Thursday night comes around, or, like, maybe Thursday you're in your college, you know, yeah. college days, you're like, oh, Friday, man. Thursday yeah, night, man. let's do it. Well, it's almost like, that's kind of the equivalent, like, the evening, you know, brewery festivals, they're so few and far between, just like taking vacation when you're in your 30s, so few and far between. But it's like people are just primed. They're ready to go. Yeah, they might have got a little bit of juice. They might have yeah. got a little juice in them before the festival, and then yeah. it's like the kind of sun's coming down, start it's pouring. It's right awesome, now. and everyone just has the same mindset. It's the wolf mentality, yeah. the, the wolf pack mentality. You know yeah. what I mean? It's so. I, I love that one. It's a lot of fun. It's you know a lot I mean? of fun. And there's well, everybody goes too. You know, because everybody's excited about that one. So well, like everybody, you guys know in the industry goes. Everybody yes. I know in the industry goes, and becomes a family affair with a bunch of friends, a bunch of family people that you love, they hang, love to hang out with, and you're not dying at night. Yes. And of course, the the, the local beer consumers for us here locally, they're not the typical beer festival people like GBA. They go in for the, the prime tapping. They only go for prime tapping and they wait online, and that's what they're there for. They're Thank there you. To judge. You're gonna get a bunch of whales there. No. I like it. You go there, you go, you support the brewery that you like, they might some brewers might have something special they might have a special variant yeah. for you. but that's not guaranteed there everybody's just hanging out hanging out supporting local breweries hanging out in downtown dallas you might swing by there for 30 bucks you might swing by drink a couple of beers and go downtown and leave them or something yeah you know? but it's awesome. just more about like the good time as opposed exactly. to like you know standing in line to try the light the latest like barrel aged beer right no you know it's I mean? not but like a so that's that's my favorite thing about that place you know Core, yeah. core brands do exist. They, they, do, they do exist, but also local core brands. I feel like see those, you guys had a bunch of, like, even last year, you guys had a big line for your, uh, for uh, Observer Fest. Yeah. Uh, Manhattan Project had a big line. Uh, OHB had a big line. The, the big name, uh, local craft brewery names had lines, but it wasn't ridiculous lines either, and they were moving pretty fast, And but everybody was there to have fun. Nobody was an asshole for, as far as the like, consumer side and at the brewer side, everybody was just hanging out with each other. Because yeah. towards the middle of the night, we all were just drinking together. I shot, I had my first shotgun there. <laughs> ever? Yeah, ever. My first shotgun Cherry ever. Pops. Yeah. Unbelievable. Cherry yeah. Pops. Yeah, with Brad ever. from uh, OHB. 
he, he was like, you never had a shotgun before? I was like, no. He's like, we're doing it. Him and Sean. He, would, he, he would never do that. Come on. Never? No, I got video. Never. <laughs> I got never. video. Hi, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Sean, they taught me how to shotgun a beer. That's awesome. And I That's fucked awesome. up and I had to, I sprayed the, the beer on everybody. They, they showed you on the can, they're like, okay, here's the air bubble. You don't want to tilt it like this and pop it everybody. You want to have the air pop it. Tilt. Look this way. Look this way. Come on. Turn this way. She's Turn this fine. way. Let's go that way. There we go. There we go. Face it. There we go. Let's bring in. There we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. She is the star of the podcast. She but is. She is. We can talk all day about what we love about the Observer Fest and shout out to Observer Fest and people who put it together. Uh, we really do appreciate it. But let's talk about a perspective in Yogi and yeah. the organization that it helps the proceeds go to. Yes. Uh, perspective, uh, Hazy Pale Ale. Um, well, we haven't made it, you know, I guess common knowledge to all of uh, our fans out there, GPA is actually going away in cans. Uh, it'll always be around on draft because it just sells so well on draft. Um, it's great you know, on draft it, it's, it's a four year plus old beer now, which is a lifetime in the industry. You know, that, that's, yeah. that's a grandfather, if you will. So we kind of looked at it and talked to some other breweries and you know, the haze is going nowhere. And uh, actually back last September, remember when we went to GABF, we talked to some of the guys that were in the same portfolio as us in our Houston distributor. And I was like, hey, how's your haze doing, uh, your hazy pale ale versus your pale ale? And they're like, oh, 300% more sales. I'm like, okay, writing's on the wall, right? So, well, I still have a, um, you know, a huge uh, piece in my heart, a space in my heart for GPA. It's like, you gotta do what people want, right? So, go and do the hazy pale ale, and it's called Perspective, and there's a big story behind it, behind Joby and, and dog rescue and all that. and to kind of jump through some of it. Um, you know, she got real sick one day when we went on a trip to Bend, Oregon. And, uh, you know, after a week and a half of at the vet, we talked about it earlier, yeah. she got nursed back to health and, you know. Happy that she's perfectly healthy now. She's actually not my dog, she's my girlfriend's dog, Jill. And uh, Jill, at one point, said to me, you know, puts things in perspective when a family member or a dog gets sick. I'm like, damn, perspective, that's a good name for beer. Yeah. It's like, can we put your dog on a can? She's like, absolutely, let's do it. And then she was like, uh, one of her good friends is part of Paws in the City. She's like, let's get you linked up with uh, Mark Verma from Paws in the City, who I later met him. And he's doing all these events with us. And we're, uh, a portion of the process is going to Paws yep. in the City to rescue dogs. We do tons nice. of dog events here. It's awesome. We're actually doing an event tomorrow at Growlers at the Shacks in the Colony. So there's going to be puppies there. And then uh, lots of good beer. Shacks in the Colony. I have to, I'm going to have to pull that video and put, make sure I put it out. Growler. Yeah, Growlers. So that's hey, awesome. Uh, so even if they buy it on six packs, does uh, the proceeds go to it? Yes. Out of, uh, events. Okay. Yeah. So we do, uh, you know, six packs, uh, even beer sold in the tap room. So. Okay. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And so people who are watching who love your pets, I love my pets. I just spent three hundred dollars on my pets on Wednesday. Uh, one of my pets are sick, so I'm buying me a six pack on the way home. A perspective, but you guys should do yeah. the same thing. Buy a six pack perspective. Exactly. And I'm glad you're here, young lady. Yeah, Jovi. Yeah, yeah, good girl, Jovi. So there's that. Um, happy with it. Uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of just. It's a good beer, too. We it's can, a beer yeah. beer itself. Like, yeah, like, I mean, you know, we use Amarillo and Whole Melon. For yeah, Whole Melon, Amarillo, and Simcoe hops for yep, the dry hops. So. Phenomenal. So it's easy drinking hops. It, yeah, it's like if you like, well, if you like hazy, I mean, it's one of those beers that you drink, like, what, you know, when it's really hot. It's not, you know, a lot of the juicy IPAs are. It's very easy to forget that they're nine, ten percent the double IPAs. Yeah. Yeah. This one is like all day floating in the pool. Five point two. It's five point. Okay, that's what I was saying. I, was like, I know it's yeah. like five percent. Five point two. Easy, 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 easy. And you're not gonna die drinking all day by the pool. You know, it's kind of funny. Like we've gotten used. I personally gotten used to, and I think, I think a lot of craft beer, you know, quote unquote geeks, we're all geeks at this point. Um, get used to like super juice uh you know it's gotta you gotta be able to smell it from across the bar that kind of thing yeah. and so when we first released the beer it's like okay it's got a really nice hop aroma but it's not haze wizard like level but it doesn't need to be that yeah. you know it's like it's just one of those things where it's like i don't know it's like people who eat hot peppers it's like you don't need to blow your face off every single time you eat a meal <laughs> with you know XYZ there's some pepper. People out, there's very yeah. few people out there who like it. Like, they are out there. Yeah, it's just like kind of like the West Coast IPAs of the uh, of the you know old school 10, 15 years ago. It's like you don't need Hop Stupid by Lagunitas uh, 159 IBUs 
every time you drink one, right? No. So or Dogfish 120. Yeah, right on. You know, I think she wanted. To, she's about to jump. That scared me. Yeah, no, that's fine. You know, she's a young lady, but I feel <laughs> I, I feel scared about my dog. My dog's eight and a half years old. Uh, so she's gonna get her teeth cleaned next week, but she has a, a big tumor in her mouth. Uh, they're gonna remove and see what that looks like. And then I, but I don't see because. She naturally has big sized jaws. What kind of dog? She's a red-nosed pig. Uh-huh. So she has big jaws already. So the, the I brush her teeth too. So the vet was like, did you see this big tumor on the side of her mouth? It's like an what? abscess or something? Yeah, yeah. big side on the side. Yeah, those are kind of dangerous actually. Yeah, so it's in her it's in her jaw right there. And they're like, no, I didn't notice it. Because when I brush her, she faces me on her right side. And it's on her left side, all, ah. the, all the way on the other side in the back. Yeah. So I'm like, I never noticed it. So that's why we're gonna get a teeth clean next week. So while she's out, they're gonna take the tumor out. So I know, she's man. eight years old. So whenever she jumps off the couch, I look at it. She's like, whoa, whoa. Easy, easy, <laughs> easy. You're gonna break something. Easy. You got, you got young kids. You're right. Anymore. You're right. Exactly. Um, but let's talk. Also, what I'm really excited about you guys is, hey, uh, I really want to jump on this early because this is one part of the early part of the podcast. Is the possible moving or when that's gonna happen? We're the, definitely the, moving. So yeah. that's definitely happening. We're definitely, definitely moving. Because I drove by the facility, I don't see anything happening yet. So I was a little worried about that. Well, there, I mean, there's a lot of happening. There's a lot happening inside. Okay. So like uh, construction's going on, um, you know. So it's, it's kind of like we're just working out the logistics now. I mean, like this place, we, you know, days are counted. We're excited to get over there, you know. Well, because it's just like, I mean, if you've been you've been here a couple of times. You yeah. Know what I mean, but it's like I love it here. here. Like a. I think we did a good job with the tap room inside, and it's fun because it's like you're in the brewery. No, right? I love it here. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but as far as like the visibility, like you have to be planning to come here, you know? Yeah. To like to 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 find yourself in Farmer's Branch, unless you're visiting your mom, your uncle, or your sister, right? And even on this road right here, because it's the industrial road right here, so you have to be really be on this road looking for something. Like, is that a brewery right there? Yeah. So not- it is a brewery. But like I said, <laughs> like you know, we get like. 15 cars that drive by every day, 10 of which are delivery trucks. Yeah, you know? sure. So it's like a... I saw like, Amazon shop by earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then the new place, like the new place, like you're driving on 35. Yeah. You know, you can see it from the highway. So it's like, if you're stuck in traffic at 5 p.m. and you see like brewery, if you're anything like me, I'm assuming a lot of people that watch this are, if you're stuck in traffic <laughs> and it's like, it's going to take me an hour to get home, there's a brewery right there. I'm like, mm, I'll I grab a beer real quick and then the, chill. Four no. hours later, <laughs> I. But exactly. part of the reason why I love this small brewery, it is, does have a homey feeling to it because it's within the brewery. But that's more of like a what you would call like a European feeling, where it's in the neighborhood, it, but it's not really in the neighborhood. It's outside the block, but you can walk here because the house, the houses are not too far from here. You live less than a five minute drive. You live in the neighborhood next over. Uh, yeah. and it's it's nice. But you, you're right. You have to have the want to be here and know that it's here. But what I'm also excited, that's why I was kind of being stalkers earlier, is like, I don't see construction at the facility, because every time I drive by, I know the building. I used to live in uh, downtown Farmers Branch, and I used to live over there. So I know the building, so every time I drive by, on, I don't see nothing. So I'm like, I was being stalkers, You're like, is it going to happen? Oh, well, it's definitely happening, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like, kind of general update. So the it doesn't look like much is going on outside, like Rodrigo said, it's most of what's going on inside. So what they've done outside is like, They've already dug up the the uh, entrance to put in the water main, uh, put in electricity, uh, done the plumbing inside the facility. In fact, if you walk inside the place, um, we've got our trench drains already built out where the nice. brewery is going, the cellar, or the brew house in the cellar, and everything like that. Um, and I can't wait for the concrete overpour. There's something about concrete overpour that just like satisfying. Just like I'm just like I, you know, I'm what looking up mean, breweries online since I was. 16 you know for the last 20 years so it's like always love something something about concrete and slope drains i know working without slope drains sucks and we got some yeah. unsloped you know floors here but uh it's once that happens then it's gonna start feel real and they're saying i mean i think with a little bit of luck i mean we're supposed to be able to sell our first six pack of beer out of that facility which is september 1st now i don't not not all the brewing equipment will be there by then but it's kind of like let's do tap room one area and then not still be brewing here, but finishing out and finishing yeah. up tanks and, and you know whatever you got working on, wrap it up, then we'll slowly move that over. Right. Exactly. No, that's smart. That's smart. I like it. No, I was just like I said, I was being like a stalkerish guy, 
looking at a girl and you haven't left your house yet. Like, <laughs> that's funny. You might be getting ready inside, but I don't see nothing on the outside. That's no, really funny. There's <laughs> stuff definitely happening. But like I said, we're really excited just because it'll be a really different change. I'm know? excited. You know and what? Then, because uh, starting in early 2019, and I don't know if Rodrigo, so I don't mean to cut you off. Of course. Starting in early 2019, there's two things I wanted to do. That's why I texted you earlier in the year, and I texted Brad from Oak Islands. Uh, two of my favorite breweries no one really talks about as far as like, the craft beer Instagrammers, you know, unless you guys do something like an event, people share it. But as far as like on a regular basis coming here drinking a beer or Oak Highlands, not too many of us in the, the beer locally that's into it that come here and take a picture and hang out. Fair enough. And so I wanted to support my friends who I love their beers. I love Oak Highlands and I love Three Nations, you guys' beers, but I want people to talk about you guys more. I want people to, to visit here, know that you guys have great beers. Because I think, in my opinion, I've said this a thousand times. You have the best base stout, and the variants you guys make from there is phenomenal. You know, yep. your Mexican style is phenomenal, yep. and the variants you build on top of that is phenomenal. You know why? Because you have a great uh, non-adjunct stout to begin with. Yep. So thank you. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Well, I, uh, yeah, that's how. Like I said, I always tell the story because like yeah, that's how I got sold. I remember like the second interview I had here we with him and his business partner, and they let me try the beers that we had on tap. And like, do we have that many taps back then? We had eight back then, man. Yeah. So, like, I tried creme brulee and Mexican chocolate for on Delicious, tap. yeah. And that was the biggest thing. Like, I was interviewing for a couple other people, and uh, I was sold on the beer, you know? But, uh, and I tried creme brulee, and I was like, dude, this is amazing, you know? And there was, like, the base, because the base that was on tap, too. It was Mexican chocolate, creme brulee, and it was, and I was like, these are a lot better. Like, these are the be these are the beers that people fight over, Yeah. you know? So, three you years bet. later, two years later, yeah, three years later? Three years Almost later. three. Salud. God bless, yeah, dude. Salud you three years. three years. Well, in December is three years, right? Yeah, November, November 15th is year three. Oh, yeah, there you go. That, yeah, that's right. That's, that's your right. birthday's in December, celebrate. yeah. We're going to celebrate oh, yeah. in a new building. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yo, so whenever you have... My thing is this. Like, do I like to add them to my stouts and do they add flavor to it? Of course. But when you have such a solid base stout, you know, with no adjuncts, and people love that version of it, that's not barrel aged. It doesn't have any added flavors or adjuncts to it. And it's still good and people still drink it. Like I'll still drink that in the summertime all day. But then when you add stuff to it, it accentuates. It makes it much, that much better. So that's why I want you guys to be out there and I want people, I want more of the local people to appreciate you guys more. It's not like the people don't, people buy a you know, GPA, people sure. buy the hazy, people do come out to support your events because I try to come out and support and I always see uh, a lot of Instagram guys out here too, you know? So I really appreciate that. So people do love you. I just want more of it. You know, oh, I'm being so greedy. I'm being greedy. I want more love for you guys. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. For so sure. I, although I don't have a sleeve on right now, and there's so many tricks up here. You can see my armpit hair. <laughs> <laughs> there's a trick in every every oh, armpit man. hair you see there. So no, we got this three barrel system there. Um, and then, you know, let's not joke about it or let's not even, you know, it, it's so true. It's it just... People want new, new, new all the time, and it's like if that's a game we gotta play, it's tough with that size. Don't worry, don't worry, we're good. Like, don't worry. Like, so the the whole thing with uh, a production brewery, it's like, look, super hats off to guys at Turning Point and Celestial. They can just go boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, knock them all out, which is awesome. And I, I can't wait to I can't wait to be able to do that. But the problem is you've got got to go get this branding campaign together so name the beer get the design go get label approval go order cans uh go get you know pay a ton for the cans because they're shrinks because it's a small volume of cans it just creates a nightmare right oh, so what we, what we don't have right now is we don't have a three barrel uh, you know small batch system like we have in the new place it's already been purchased it's sitting in a warehouse right now so that is like hey all the bullshit behind creating a new beer is gone, yep. yeah. which is great. Don't don't kill her, Jovi. So that's gone, and so it's like it's gonna make so things so much easier. No, I mean that's so that's also exciting. I didn't know that. That's also exciting. We can make all the weird stuff we want. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's like that's one of those things that's like hard to do, like here because like it's thirty barrels. You know what I mean? Like we have to commit the thirty barrels for everything we do. Yep. But it's like when we have that's a little bat, like we have a small batch system, we can you know. We can throw the armpit hairs in, like in the boil. You know what I mean? <laughs> Go top. But like, See uh, what flavor is that? <laughs> you know, I mean, sure, it's a different kind of yeast. 
But yeah, <laughs> sure. But like, uh, no, but that's a cool thing. You know what I mean? Like all the stuff, like the stuff we can do, like a lot of the weird stuff that we've never done, we can do like when we're there. You know? So all the weird things that you come up with, you know, it's an, it'll be an actual beer lab. No, that's yeah. exciting. Really yeah. No, there's no knocking turning point in uh, Celestial. I love those guys over there, and I know you guys love those guys too. Yeah. Uh, but thousand it's, percent. It, it is it, when you have such a small little pilot system like the way they do. Can they make? They can put their stuff in uh, kegs. Some kegs, big kegs, and they want to make it. If they try something weird that doesn't work out, like Celestial tried something weird recently. They didn't say what beer it was, but they dumped it because it didn't work out the way they thought. Oh, like, really? Yeah, they had a picture of uh, Rigel, I think that's her name. Sorry if I said it wrong, I'm so sorry. But <laughs> they have a picture of her on Instagram. Those things happen, though. You know, when a beer went bad, but it's what happens when you try uh, a new beer, you sure. add a new adjunct to a style you never did before, and it might not work out the way you were expecting. Things so, happen. Things happen. I've right? overcooked, uh, you know, overbaked a cake before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, I've yeah. burned a few cakes in my life. Yeah. So when you <laughs> have the ability, cake. when I'm making one cake, I can throw away one cake. But if I'm making 50 cakes, 100 cakes, yeah. it's hard to throw away 100 cakes. So yeah. I got to go with what I know works versus adding little things, you know? Yeah. So I'm excited about the pilot system that you guys are going to have in a new building. So Because I know your creativity is amazing because we have the Mexican style. We have the adjuncts to the Mexican style. I will say this. And those beers are fantastic, and I'm very proud of them. But like, I love them. so there's there's always a something between there, there, there's this happy medium between doing something super gangster, for example, cost, uh, uh, the feasibility of it, yeah, um, how much you're gonna put out, uh, what kind of branding and marketing campaign you need. There's so many moving parts. There's so if you just want to go, yeah, yeah. You, like I'm one of those dudes. Like I'm I'm a uh, Personally, I think that I just I love shooting from the hip. I absolutely love it, and it drives my yeah. business partners crazy. Why? Because I shoot from the hip. Because I like I get I get creative, and I just think about this, and I'm like, boom, that'd be a cool idea. Let's do that. Yeah. Well, now we can do that. With you know what I mean? Yeah. With the, yeah, yeah, with the exactly. My brother's the same way. My brother's a chef. Opened his place in New York. Go look it up. Res Dora. Uh, just uh, number right one there. number one place to eat uh, according to GrubStreet.com uh, today on Facebook. I'm super hey, excited. Super Grub proud Street of it. Is, listen. People who don't know what Grub Street is, if you go to New York, that's the place you want to look at. You don't want to look at Yelp or anything like that. Grub Street, you have actual, honest feedback on breweries, real reviews on breweries. That's where you uh, not Couldn't breweries, believe it. Restaurants. Restaurants. <laughs> restaurants. Top, yeah. top 12 places to eat. And I was there last weekend. Uh, I went two nights. Absolutely incredible. He's number one. I don't want to get diverted here. But no, no, no. Talk about your he, brother. Talk so, about your brother. Yeah, so proud. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he can afford. Okay, you want to shoot from the hip? If you're if you own wrist door like my brother, then go do something crazy and then it's one plate of food. You wanna shoot from the hip here? Seventy kegs worth, exactly. right? So that'll change. That's, that's all yeah, I'm getting that's at. Exciting. Well like I said, but we're excited about being able to do weird things. Because it's like if we if like you said, if we have to like if we burnt the cake, you know? So yeah. like so like but but like at least we get to try like different things that we don't have to worry about, like yeah. all the things that he mentioned, like having to get a label approval, like all this other stuff, like we can just make here we want to make, right? So that'll be that's the fun part, you know. I'm excited about that part. Listen, the beers you guys make here are great already. You know, uh, the, uh, uh, Lady Luck is probably the reason why we came the next day. Yeah, came. that was good, man. That we need to bring delicious. that thing back. That was good. That was so good. Lady Luck is the reason why we. I came back the next day, but then you introduced me to the, the Mexican style in the berries, and I was like, oh, this place is phenomenal. You guys make killer uh, beers. Thank you, man. Like, Lady Luck, you brought on the studio, and I was like, ah, oh, this is everything right now. This is everything. That was a weird one. That was from the hip that worked. A hundred percent, but it was so good. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And I was like, yeah, we eat a lot of tacos here, so horchata is always <laughs> part of them, part of the equation. It's nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. That was a great beer. So, I mean, that's, that's the reason why I'm excited about the pilot system, because if we can make more styles like that, fuck it, I know you can make it. Let's do it. I'm excited. And then in true, uh, in true distribution fashion, uh, we'll put the small batch series tag on it. The ones that we actually make it from the three barrel system to the thirty barrel system. Yeah. And but it's true though, it's small batch and small is relative, right? Yeah. What's small for uh, you know, A B N Bev? <laughs> like it was the, probably what we do in a year, right? <laughs> much. For one beer. Yeah. Yeah. What Bud Light makes is this is a small batch. This yeah, is yeah. Light. They uh, they they piss out what we brew in a year. Exactly. <laughs> that was the beer they dump in a year. Yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, it's definitely perspective, but I'm excited about it. And that's the reason why I'm harassing you guys about the new building, because I'm excited about it. I'm really, really excited about it. Well, I also love you so much. I, I, I like you. I love you a lot. Right? <laughs> I like you all right. I like you, you all right. Okay. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah, I love you too, Rodrigo. But it's nothing wrong with you at all. But it's more like the first time we came here to hang out with you, you got... Uh, I forgot what variants of the Mexican style you were pulling out. I forgot I what it was. Time. But you pulled out from the keg and everybody was here. Even if you barely knew them or they were regulars, you gave everybody a chance to try it. And you God, walked around. What was that? That would have been the... Banana Fosses. Like, I want to say it was Banana Fosses, but I'm not 100% sure. Before it came out, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it was right before it came out last year. Yeah. So yeah. we tried Lady Luck. We saw your system. And then I, I want to say it was Banana Fosses, but I didn't record it, so I don't have any evidence of it. But you <laughs> went to the back. You poured it out. And it was before it was ready to push out. Still kind of fresh. Yeah. And you say it's ready to drink, but it's not uh, carbonated yet. Sure. And you have, but you just, not just gave it to us. Gave it to your regulars, and once everybody that you knew had it. Oh, someone pulled from the fermenter. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, but these are the points to all the other people who are here because you were just like, you know what? I have no beer. I want people to try it. Well, well these are the people enough. who are going to tell you if it sucks or not. Yeah. yeah. So. True. I mean, it I really, sucks. Really, you got to know, right? I exactly. really appreciate that. I was like, oh my god. Yes. Seriously. Yeah. It's like. It's like when you're dating the girl when you're in your 20s and like you bring around like the worst friends you could possibly imagine, but the guys you probably hang out with every day in Rodrigo and I's case. <laughs> and she's just not cool. It's like, you got to know if she sucks, right? You got to tell yeah. your friends, man. <laughs> you got to tell your I, friends. I, yo, so can I, I want to tell the story. My, uh, one of my co-hosts, I had the, me and her biggest argument. She's a really good friend of mine. One of my old co-hosts, uh, she used to be on the show. Her name is uh, Kirsty. I was going to say Casey, but it's Kirsty. I'm really bad with names today. What the fuck? That's <laughs> right. Uh, no, so Kirstie, uh, she has a family member that's dating a girl that she, like, she didn't like. But she felt like it's not her place to tell her brother that she doesn't like her. I was like, you're the person you need to tell 100%. that I don't like this person. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying go be a dick to the person that they bring around. But whenever you talk to your brother or your best friend, you should be the one to be like, I don't like that one for you. And like, and there's a reason why. And then like, the, I love the after the fact friends who are like, oh yeah, I never liked her anyways. Like, dude, those are the ones that used to work. Thanks. Bro. Why did you tell me, bro? Why did you tell me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I thought you like thought she was awesome. It's like, nah, she's terrible. Yeah, I hate everything about her, but you liked her. So I, I have was... more descriptive words I could use. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, okay. I'm like, oh uh, yeah. No, but you want honest friends. And with that being said, when you guys go to new facility, I invite. All people who haven't been in Three Nations or people who haven't been in a while, when they get their small batch system together, come out in Three Nations and try the new beers. And they take Don't honest feedback. Like, weird stuff. And they take honest feedback. Hey, here's a good idea. So um, I will know this date uh, much better than anyone else, and this is a moving target. But how about we release the newest uh, beers from the uh, small batch system? We invite the uh, Dallas Brew Squad and all their friends first. Yeah. The people that follow us on uh, you know Facebook. Yeah, let's do it. I'm there. Listen, right. I'll be there for everything you guys do. What I want to do for all my friends is why I keep buying more equipment for the stuff. But A, it doesn't help me, of course. But what I want to do for my friends is I think we need better promotion for craft beer. And that's what's going to help us take over big beer. It's going to be a slow process, but we make it more enticing. Make yep. better videos, better pictures, uh, better pro uh, promotion from the third party people like Sydney from Dallas Beer Squad, yep. like Sean from uh, the Dallas Beer Squad, you know, or just local people too that just help out. If you have better pictures, better promotion, we'll bring Tyson the regular people, they come hang out. Yep. And the facility like you're gonna have that is, looks massive and beautiful, it will help too. Yeah, it's uh, get these loving customers out of the heat. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I Thank y'all so this, much. <laughs> this is what I expect when I come to Three Nations. Like, it's going to be hot. I was going to be cold. Whatever the uh, weather is. Oh, yeah. Well, True. Yeah. You're outside, inside. Basically, but I like it. That's good. Well, we know, but we'll have AC at the next place, so it should be good. Damn it. Yeah. It's going to change the Well, there's going to be... There's, gonna be, uh, there's, there's gonna be, an option for no AC, though. Yeah, there's going to be AC uh, and no of. AC. So if you pick your poison. Yeah, there you go. I like that. in the no AC. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have fans. Be beers in the no AC are half off. Hey, no AC. I'll take no AC. <laughs> hey, don't quote us on that. <laughs> yeah, don't quote me on that. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, what about you, Rodrigo? So going on three years here. It's been a little bit of a ride, man. So like, so because we're moving, like, 
he's been really busy like getting everything ready to head over so like it's been really interesting for me because I've been doing a lot of stuff that I didn't normally do like venture over you know the dark side west of 35 well, where yeah, yeah, that's true yeah. well, west of 35 like the mid cities and look I've only lived here I didn't know like un until I had to go over there I didn't know anything about those places you know but it's been really fun the scene is very different you know what I mean because like the scene thing. is different and it's not that it's super local it's just like people have their choices right so it's like it's 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 fun because it becomes a challenge of introducing people to your beer and it's like hey have you had a three nations beer and they're like not really try this try that you know so it's been it's been very interesting the last like was a year Colin you know since like yeah I haven't I mean, I'm, yeah he's been kind of doing it all on his own oh wow true so it's been a anything you can do on that side of the, that side of the world but it's let been me like, know I will help out no but it's been really fun like I said like there's a lot because like there's there's people that are super passionate about beer and like I said all I knew was Dallas right and then when I started going over there like there's the same like run into like the same people like there that love beer love to hang out want to try the new yeah, stuff yeah, like, you know what i mean so passion for beer is big uh, all over dfw i think passion for beer is everywhere but it's interesting for people especially for like someone like rodrigo who hasn't been on that side of town they're different not that they're different people or they're different, like weird not at but all. Like, the yeah. perspective of beer is different versus the perspective yeah. of beer is and it's all, exactly and it's just super interesting to go and like pick up like pick people's brains it's like oh yeah. why do you like this beer why is the beer more popular than this one? you know what i mean and it's like what do you think of this do you like my beer do you hate it like it's there's a lot of like you know there's a lot of good questions to ask and it's been fun you know i like it so that's why i like so like jerry from ntx beer or sean or sydney they do beer events, Dallas, mid cities, uh, Arlington area to Fort Worth side. And what I like about that is you get to see the different beer perspective at those beer events. Because they do, they support local beer, so support local food, and then they have a bottle share. Yeah. So, but you get to see the perspective of what they order of beers. You get to see the perspective of what they bring to the beer share. And they all talk about different things. But even though the passion for beer is all the same, it's just people have their different priorities. No, it's like their palates are different though. People think of like, they, people try that's different That's a good beers, word. Like, that's what I'm that's saying. That's a like, good word. People's palates are different because like they try, and like I said, they've had one or two of our beers and then like you bring one and bring a new one and it's like, oh wow, like this tastes like this. You know what I mean? Which is something that people in Dallas don't say. You know, because it's yeah. like we don't have a turning point like on the Dallas side. I mean, we have obviously Celestial, but like, I'm just saying like the east like side of Dallas, like the uptowns, the you know, east Dallas like worlds, you know, like we don't Addison have side, yeah. yeah, but it's like so yeah, exactly or Addison, Plano, like those areas. You know what I mean? Like people have an idea of like what a great IPA is. You yeah. know what I mean? And then you go to like Fort Worth and you try the beers there. And it's like people have like your Martin houses, like the legal grass, like everybody on that side. You know what I mean? So it's like really interesting because like the comfort beers are different for everybody. No, right? I like that. That's the that's what I, I wish I said earlier. Perspective is a good word because their of course their perspective is different because their palate is slightly different. Yeah, and well, their comfort access. beers, their comfort beers, their go-to's are different on each side of town, which is yeah. super interesting. You know what I mean? It and that's been like super enlightening for me because it's like you go over there and it's like, oh well, you know, the, I, the two IPAs that people mentioned are this and this. You know, the other like the, the wheat beers that people drink are this and that. You know what I mean? So it's just really interesting. Because there's always like, you know, the usual suspects are everywhere, but like, you know, like the second and third are like this beer from this brewery, this beer from that brewery, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's different there from what it is here, or from oh, what it yeah. is in McKinney or Plano or wherever else, you know, on like the east side, right? You know? So that's been super interesting. Like for me, it's been very enlightening because it's been like, the market is different too. So like that's- Well, it just makes you a better uh, salesman because you get to know who you're talking to at the point. Well, just, you know, you know like, and for me, it's been interesting because like I said, like, you know, I, beers from breweries over there that like aren't like as popular like say like you don't see a lot of like say Panther Island in Dallas for example like in Dallas proper right so but it's like when you go over there and they have it like everywhere you know Franconia yeah, Panther, same thing. Panther Island Panther, oh, I mean any of like those other beers like, you know, no no I'm not knocking Panther Island I just want to know who likes Panther Island not that I don't know I'm not knocking Panther Island but, but let's but say I just want to meet somebody because I want to know no, but beers that you don't see in Dallas, right? Like beers yeah. that you don't normally see on tap in Dallas, like there, like because that's their neck of the woods, right? So like they have like no, of course. Hot Fusion, like all those guys over uh, there. Collective. Yeah. Exactly. Have, you know, you like know, those guys, and, like you'll see them. Exactly. Like, you see them, like you know, as opposed to like the places that you see on tap in Dallas, because like that's their neck of the woods. You yeah. Know what I mean, so like uh, it's really I, interesting. I do, I do. You know, I uh, I I call this Dallas beer talk, but I always want to say I always try to reach out to the Fort Worth side. Mid city side, and I have yet to be consistently on that side of town. 
Uh, but one day I will be more consistent outside of town doing a podcast because I do want to do a podcast with Panther Island. I do want to do a podcast with Harvesting, Martin House, uh, and you know, Collective. And all those guys, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Dom and uh, Brutal Works, so False Idol Brutal Works. I want to Whenever those guys are going, exactly. Yeah. You know, so that, that'll be like, like I said, to me it's been like a really good learning experience because I thought I knew the local peers. Bullshit, I didn't know any of them. You know, like I didn't know half of them. You know, it was really interesting to go over there and see what, you know, pe- what people's palates are like, like what their favorite beers are over there. It's yeah. fun. And yeah. it's so much different. Like, people do say DFW, you know, or when people talk about Dallas, they also tack on mid cities or in San and Fort Worth when they talk about Dallas as a whole. Yeah. I, when you, I'm talking about outside of the state, right? But when you really come over here, it, Dallas and Fort Worth, it might as well be Dallas and Houston, how different they are. And what they like to drink Some is different. True to that, man. Yeah, yeah. you know? You know, because everybody loves local, but local means different things to different people. Yeah. You know, so so that's been that's been fun. You know, but it's like doing sales, and like I said, the market is different because I came from Florida, and like, you know, oh, what part of Florida? Tampa. I used to live five minutes from Cigar City. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Shout out to Cigar City. Still love that beer. Um, But uh, but it's just different because like the climate there was like you know a couple of years ahead, and then I moved here, and all the stuff that was happening over there is happening here. Like all these breweries coming up. And like you know, and everybody coming out with all these new beers, and like, and of course the trends are different, but like that the, the culture is like evolving the same way, which is awesome. Yeah, you know, because like I mean I remember three years ago like craft beer like there weren't as many breweries and like there are the established breweries, but there's no, so many. It's if you think like three years ago the established breweries and three like three years later and like who's doing what, who's like at the top, who, and this isn't about who's at the top, who's at the bottom, but who's like who's hot right now. You know what I mean? Who's like making the best beer? Who's, Who's making- right now is always going to change. But I find interesting is like I would call Three Nations an OG to craft beer, but you guys are only four or five years old. Four years, yeah. a month ago. Yeah. So four years old, but I call you guys one of the OGs. That's how young the craft beer community yeah. is. Yeah. And that's Franconia. Is is it even ten years yet? Is Franconia? Uh, ten- yeah, they're eleven now. Eleven. So yeah. eleven years. They just made eleven years. And they're like the old OG. They're like the grandpas. Yeah. yeah. And then really? Pentacles is six years, going on six. Something like that. Seven, eight, something like that. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but it's cool because, like I said, the culture is like catching up, right? Yeah. You know? Because it's like ubiquitous now. You know? Like you can't go to a bar and not have a craft beer. Like, yes, there are bars that have like the domestic bars still exist, but it's like almost every restaurant has craft beer, you know? Which is, you know, wasn't a thing like five years ago. No. It's interesting. It's interesting. What are, what are my biggest arguments? My biggest argument to anybody, and I always put this challenge out there because I'm not saying we're the best, and I have a feeling that, in my opinion, the DFW craft beer community is the best. The way we all hang out together, we all support each other, and we all come together on things. And I feel like we're the best. I just want to see what you guys think about the craft beer community. I just really like it. Especially you were drinking, so you're from Florida too. Yeah, I mean the craft the craft beer scene was different there, and I wasn't as involved obviously as I am here. But like, uh, but everybody, I, the, the thing to me that was like not shocking because that's the wrong word, but like uh, surprising I guess was like the third party groups. I didn't know that was such a big thing. Like with the Brew Squad and yeah. like all those guys, you know what I mean? The Ducks and all those other guys, like you know that there's a uh, there's 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 such a big part of it. Right, like they're a big part of the community, yeah. and like they drive, like they drive, they, they they drive a large opinion. You know what I mean? And they're like the real like beer nerds, yeah. right? Like people that know. And like from there is like they, you know, they are the ones that like learn about the new beers, and they are the ones that educate their friends. You know, because it's not really us. Yeah. Like I mean, we do a small, very small part, but it's like the passionate guys are like, you know. The, the Sydney's and Sean's of the world, you know, they're very passionate about craft beer are the ones that like bring people to the new places and they're the ones that tell their friends and then they, you know, they educate their friends and then their friends educate their friends. You know what I mean? Like that's how the web grows, right? Yeah. You know? When you have a tight knit group, like Sean is like 4,000 plus, Sydney's like 2,000 plus, but you, it's a 2,000 plus of people who follow them. 4,000 plus of people who follow them to where they lead the, the conversation. Right. You know? So that's part of why I say we have the best community because Sean loves everybody. Yeah. And Sydney loves everybody. Sydney supports Fort Worth to Dallas to Mid Cities to McKinney. You know, she tries to support everybody because she loves craft beer. That's how passionate she is about it. That's why I uh, I did a commercial with her shirt. I heard all her merch. 
I'm wearing uh, the Bruce Quad Ooh. hat on right now, you know. Yeah. But uh, I think that's why that's why I feel like we have the best community. It's the third party is part of it, and then people like you, Gavin, who support the third party. You support the Ducks. You support uh, Sean the Dallas Bears Squad and the Bruce Squad. Absolutely. No, but you guys, I I, I would assume every, you have your equal amount of haters, but you have a lot of love here too. Now yeah. I said earlier I want to bring more love here. But it doesn't mean that you don't have love. People love you guys. Uh, Robert, myself, uh, a lot of Instagrammers, and a lot of the community love you guys a lot. Uh, and that's why I harass you guys again. We can't wait for you guys to open a new place because that place is going to be exciting. I think it's going to be great to, you know, I've always said, like, and once again, go back to all the logistics of creating a new beer and all this stuff. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of, uh, you know, running through quicksand to get to the, you know, dry ground where you can actually run fast. Um, I just think it's time to flex some beer muscle. You yeah. know what I mean? And you can't flex beer muscle when you got to do go jump through eight hoops to release a new beer. Yeah, well, that'll change. Yeah. you know what I mean. So I'm super excited about it. I'm excited yeah. about that. You know. So with that being said, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What style of beer are you you want to, uh, the community to have like to make? But what I'm trying to say is, what new beer will you be more excited about to try or you make yourself? Well, I mean... That's a great question. That's so true. So, I think if you can go in there and you can master, you know, styles that have been around since 1068, like yeah. Vine Stefan's but been, and then you can go in there and do, you know, kitchen sink uh, fruited gosa and knock them both out of the park, that's awesome. A fruited gosa is tough, but I like it, though, if you can do it well. I'm just saying, like, like it, you can do... The hardest, the, if you can do a beer that's like, the flaws will show and you knock it out of the park, yeah. that's, that's a huge you. testament to the brewer. Now, while that might be the most popular style, you can go out and brew a German style Hellas true to style that has zero flaws and it's absolutely crushable like Augustine or Hellas. That's my absolute lifelong goal. That's still my favorite beer on the planet to this day. Then okay. Then you can go out and go do, you know, uh, the... Yeah, you know the the kitchen the kitchen sink gosa, or the um, you know kitchen sink imperial sink stink kitchen sink imperial stout, and yeah. and then you know the triple IPA. You can do both of those, and the sky's the limit, man. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the, that those are the cool things, you know. Because I'm excited for us, like say, like any of our stouts to be put in a barrel. You know yeah, sure. Mean? Like those are the things that like cause we've never been able to do it. It's like where are we gonna put the barrels here? If you look around, like you know what I mean. But like a, we literally use a lot of breweries. Like we use a lot of our space, but you can see like uh, 800 square feet dead space in the back. You guys, you, you guys seriously use? It's hard, use to the camera. <laughs> it's hard to see in the camera. It's hard to see in the camera. Dude, the, the couches are gone because yeah. we were yeah. storing cans here. <laughs> As of yesterday, <laughs> literally, like oh my gosh, this facility is a counting for. So it's Yo, just like your that's... roof to the like the behind the fridge is accounted for. Yeah, yeah, but it's like you know, so it's like, like that's it. You know, like if we're really, I'm really excited for us now to have the limitations that we have. But it's just like, look, I'm a big, I'm a big core for European beers. I love Belgian beers. I want to do over the top was one of my favorite beers we ever made. I want that to come back. I want a Stone Wizard, like West Classic, like West Coast. Uh, that was so IPA. good. That beer was so great. I never had you know, it. One of, like 101, 103 IBUs, like 10.1%. So it was so good. It was so good. You know? And it's like a... But like, th those are the beers that I'm excited to see back. You know what I mean? Because like, we, we, like a key set, like flexing the beer muscle. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, you have, to, look, you have to be able to do the basics. And yeah. then you can make all the weird shit you want. You know? Yeah. But you know, you know, it's not a truth. When you said that you gotta, when you can make the basics, you can win it good. If I ever see a Kolsch or a Pilsner or the Tablis at a brewery, it's one of the first beers I tried. Because if that's bad, then you didn't try it. Because it's really hard to make a good Pilsner. It's really hard to make a good Kolsch. Absolutely. You can't do anything with it if you made it bad, made it poorly. It's right there in front of you. You can crush the stout with as much coffee as you want, you know, yeah. and, and make it. You can add fruits to your your coach if you want to, but if it's a bad base coach already, there are gonna be flaws in that fruit. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, like I said, it, like the basics, like you know, like like I said, you want to know, like you know, it's like crawling before you run, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And that's like I mean, proof proof of concept, like the shed and silo, the hypervisor. 
I really wanted us to make it have a lesson because like I said, I lived in Europe for a long time and I love, love, love like Belgian beers, love German beers. I knew you train in Germany and it was one of those like I always wanted us to have a cup of because it's just one of my favorite styles here. And we made this one and I was like, yeah. And I knew it was going to be good, I didn't think it was going to be this good. I'm with you, I didn't think it was going to be this good. It was one of those, like, I was like, <laughs> I'm being honest. Yeah. No, because like, it was pleasantly surprised because like, look, the Vine Stefans, the Francis Connors, the Paul Honors of the world, like, everybody knows how good those beers are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we made ours, and it's like, because we, we talked about how we wanted it to be like really German, right? And we tried it, and I was like, wow, like, it's good. It's way better than I thought it was going to be. You know what I mean? Like, it was, I'm, like, and I've been drinking with non-stop, you know? Yeah, well, it's I'm, not on tap right now because we're out of it. I'm draft. scared. I'm scared to bring because uh, I'm not a big. I sound obviously. I'm not a big fan of uh, Hefeweizen in our uh, Belgian Dunkels. I don't like the banana clubs. So what I've been trying to do lately, and whatever I don't like, I want to try more of. Try to figure out if there's various I do like about it. So uh, what I got right now is my friend and I, uh, mostly my friend, uh, home brewed American style uh, wheat beer with a lot of peaches, and it came out really, really well. I like it. So I would love to bring you guys a bottle and then see what you guys think. Let's try it out. We got, we got a couple bottles in the fridge right now that uh, one of our buddies dropped off at texted me when we were out of town. Crack those in a second, but yeah. I don't remember the style. But yeah, yeah, I'm all, I'm all for it. We can crack open that, uh, that, uh, that stout. What did you bring? I brought uh, licorice, that uh, uh, flavor master from Iron House, and I also brought that orange uh, stout from... Uh, Bourbon Island, Bourbon County, Bourbon County. Oh, no, wow. Bourbon, no, Goose Island. Goose oh, Island. Yeah. Goose Island, the Bourbon County. Orange, I think the orange yeah, is Bourbon County, little... Goose Island, uh, the orange. Uh, you know what, the, the orange, I can't remember, because I eat, well, I used to work there, and I remember I worked the overnight shift, and we'd go in the cooler, and there was always, like, you know, surplus of this, that, and the other. I mean, like any brewery, right? Yeah. And I remember this, like, one stack they had. It was, like, a small, like, you know, size Benny Keith palette or whatever. Yeah. There was always like you know this that and the other on there and whatever and like it was kind of forbidden stuff and I never touched it. Um, but it was always like I think the surplus was like it was always vanilla, coffee, and then Bourbon County Rare and then the orange one. So that was before like you know you say they say your palate changes every seven years. Yeah. I was twenty seven. I was I was twenty seven at the time, and like at that point I didn't even like sour beers, like real boozy barrel aged stuff I didn't like. 36 now a different story, right? But uh, you. but no, it. that's the thing, dude. You want to the sad thing is like, I haven't had any of the, the variants of Bourbon County Stout, and I used to work there. Really? I swear to God. That's I've, had, I've had only the original. That's it. That's insane. I would imagine be at least working there, tasting it to see what you guys are working on. It's just so many beers, man. Like, you know? They make a lot of beers, yeah. But this is my first year, so I'm still new to craft beer, so. This is my first year drinking Bourbon County, and thank you for not making fun of me for messing up the name. I messed up the name horribly. I said Goose County Bourbon Island. <laughs> Bourbon That's actually a good idea for a beer. Goose County Bourbon Island. See if you get sued. <laughs> <laughs> they can't. It's exactly. not the same. It's not the same. Goose County Bourbon Island. Damn it, this is on the air. Don't. We're gonna you're edit gonna this part. Edit that out. this part. This <laughs> engineer, engineer, delete that. Yeah, this is what we pre-record. Keep that for you guys. Keep that for yourself. Hey, you imagine that on the three, ba- three barrel system, Goose County, Bourbon Island. I like it. I like it. I like it with some coffee and vanilla beans. I like it. Hey, All right, so to sub back in, sub yeah. back in. All right, so whatever, erase that last part of the conversation. It's gone. Um, so we got some cool things coming on. Um, I was lucky enough to work with some guys that are, work, that are owned by big breweries now. They're my old nice. bosses back in the day. So we got our hands on some beautiful new hops that no one else can get. Ooh, is it through, through, hops? through relationships, uh, South African hops. Ooh, okay. And I, from what I understand, this big company owns the hop farm. And I was able to call upon old friends of mine, and they got us linked up. So Hayes Volume 11 is going to have some hops that no one else can get. Hayes Volume 10 was really good. Yeah, I had it a second ago. It was really Hayes good. Hayes Volume 10 was Lemon Drop and Zaka and Mosaic? Yes. Yes. But yeah, the stuff we got for 11 is uh, South African. Um, we have actually, it might go 50 50, but we're going to hedge our bets. I always, I'm going I'm to hedge your bet type guy. <laughs> so we're going to go and uh, 50, dry, 50. We're, dry, we're dry hopping tomorrow okay. with the South African hops. And then uh, it'll be one of those things where you, that's what we do. 
Let me know when it's ready. Cause I want to try it. That's what you do. You shoot I from the hip. It. I want to try it. I love it. it. I want to try it. Wild, wild west. You know what I realized? The experimental hops or the, the European style hops that we don't get access here often, I tend to like those more. And I've never had, to my knowledge, a South American or South African hop. The ones we picked were uh, very pineapple, stone fruit, grapefruit. Guava and coconut forward. So I'm excited about these. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. You had me at pineapple. <laughs> you had me at pineapple. I'm, no, I'm yeah. a big hop nerd. Like I said, never heard of like whatever we talked about. And I was like, yeah. no, I'm I'm never super heard pumped. We we'll dry hop tomorrow. I'm going to be here bright and early at 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Early, early. <laughs> early. Like I go to work at 5 in the morning, super early. No, I, I'll be here early tomorrow, but. Uh, Anyhow, no, I'm super pumped no, about that's those. Exciting. So yeah. that that's happening tomorrow. Two weeks that's from there, start well, canning. Hazel Lemon is dropping what? Sorry, two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah, so you dry hop it tomorrow. About two or three weeks from there, you start that's, canning. That's that's pretty fair. Let's call it let's call it 17 days from tomorrow. So tomorrow's the 20th. So just do the math. Yeah. August so, 10th release, August something 10th, like that. August 7th, I I can't. I'm not something great at like math. That. So. Sorry, I'm not. Yeah. You know, is there any way? I know it's hard. The TBDC is hard here in Texas. You can't change once you get a uh, label approved. And my only problem with uh, the Haze Wizards, I like the variance you guys do with it. It just, when I go to the stores, if I don't I'll ask you directly or ask Robert or uh, Rick from uh, Taps and Cap, if I don't ask the owners directly what variance this is, okay, I won't know. So, so, this is actually good. Like, no, it's actually great that you asked that question. So, we've had this issue as well. But if you buy it in a six pack, uh, the pack tag, so like you the six know. pack holder, yeah. the six pack holder has a white sticker on it that says which variant and which hops. I never knew that. Yes. Oh my yes. god, yeah. So it's out there now. Sorry, we hadn't said that before. And, but. and I will say, go, go ahead and finish. Go, 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 go. I will say this the way our haze moves, moves there's about two weeks between uh, the end of a, a haze and a, and a release of a new one. So if you go by singles, 99.5. 5% chance that the single is the same as the one that's in six packs. So yeah. just go with exactly. that. Exactly. So okay. like if you're a total wine looking at the singles rack and you see like a haze lizard like by itself, yeah. just look at the six pack, like the full six packs, like almost guaranteed it's the same one. Yeah. Very few, very rare that it's not the same yeah, one. Yeah, but it's like from now, look, because we took the feedback, we, the, you're not the first person to bring it up. Yep. So like, uh, so like we, uh, we started adding it to like, you know, to, we can't we can't do it in each individual can because like because TBC we is weird. Get, like a hundred volunteers. TBC is weird, yeah. Well, no, we can, I guess the, we the, the printer is expensive as heck. All hell. That, okay, yeah. You know, and it's like we can't put a sticker on every can. You know, I mean, unless we get some volunteers. But like, uh, it's I thought fall they might want to volunteer the sticker to cans. Come through one, one in every can. Uh, but uh, no, so like, so but if you don't know, now you know. So like. The, top, the six pack holder, there's a white sticker on it, it says the volume, and it says what hops. Nice. Now it's good to know, I need to know. Because I always just trust Robert. I was like, Robert, what various this is? Or just Rick when I go to the, the bottle shop. On top For of sure. It. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so like, now you know. You know, you're looking for hands. You know, look at the six, the top of the six pack. It has the inflation there. Yeah, so 11's coming out. Like the, what, 10? Oh, 10 was the, the, the one I liked because we had it here with you. Uh, a few weeks ago. Yes. Okay. But like we're really proud of that beer just because like, you know, like from you know from Hayes Volume One, you remember that one. And then like to what we have now, it's like, you know, but I think we nailed we finally like, you know, caught the stride with like the style, you know, and how to make it right. You know? I think it's a great series. Listen, I two series that I really, really appreciate the most, DDA series. And your series, like yeah. the, totally, totally, I think totally like, different. Totally they're, they're, different they're, 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 their next one is twelve, right? So they're yeah. twelve is next, and then ours is eleven. We're about so one like, behind them. So one behind. they're about like every time they release like one point three three volumes ahead of us, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Know? So no, it's great. It's man. funny how the life works out because you guys didn't plan that. You guys didn't think Not about it. No, like you know. What I, I mean? will say this, and. Uh, Tip of the cap, the turning point, guys. I think we're the first one who brewed a hazy IPA in DFW because we did a collaboration with them. This is a uh, this was March, no, May of 2017. 2017. It was all the pulp. All the pulp. It was right before they got going. That was you guys. Oh, okay. That was us. With them. No way. So all the credit to them. But yeah, that was like the very first one. But the thing is, like, I remember because I was, I would go around, I would go around with like the Fulfilled guys and tell people about it. 
And it's like, it's a New England style IPA. And people are like, what? And it's like, you know? Because it's amazing. Like, but and the funny thing is, like a year later at GABF, it was the most like the Popular most sub, no, it was the most submitted to style. Like it was blew everything else out of the in water. The, ever and in the first year. Exactly. Ever, ever and, in the, and first, in the first year. Yeah. So like the most outrageous amount of submissions, you know. And this was like on the tails where everybody thought like brewed IPA was gonna be the new thing. Bro, I was literally arguing with my friend, the one who helped brew uh, the bread. Oh, not the bread. The, um, American uh, uh, wheat beer. Yeah, the, yeah, the wheat beer. He's just I'm a friend with you guys. Friends you guys. It's uh, take up the uh, the bottle tonight. Uh, so I bring it out here tomorrow. Uh, if you want, I'll be here. I'll, I'll bring it out here tomorrow. Everybody. <laughs> so this is Bourbon County Goose Island. Uh, what is what's the variance on this? Uh, orange 18? and uh, orange peels and coconut nips. Yeah. Smell the orange. You can smell the orange. The thing that's so great about these beers, though, because like these big like stouts, like the ones that are made well, like the nose is always so great. So, yeah. And that's actually something we take great pride in our beers. Like the nose is always really great. God, that's oh, that's so good. good. It's good. That's good. But that's why I uh, I yell from uh, from uh, Mountain High. I think you have the base the best yeah. base beer because if you have a good base uh, stout, not beer, base stout. Um, with no adjuncts and it smells good, it tastes good, it's flavorful, right? Then you add the adjuncts, like, what do you, if you add orange peels and coconuts, you know, that just adds to the, the sexiness of the style you already have. It adds to the beauty of the style you already well, have. I not had this. How do you know this one existed, to be honest? Like, yeah. I, this is the, one I, the only one I haven't tried yet. So I bought it today wow, and I, was, I thought I'd bring it to bring it Look over at that here. lace, like, this is really, really great. Like I said, I haven't had one of these in a while. Oh, this is delicious. I'm really happy I brought it. Like, this is really good. And I'm really happy about that sour. Like, that and sour was delicious. That was phenomenal. Oh my god. It's been a while. That's got alcohol in it. Jesus Christ. You can taste the alcohol, but it's delicious. No kidding. Yeah. Um, anyway, man. But yeah, we were just chatting about, like, you know. Traveling. What was, like, what was the first craft beer that you had? I don't think I've asked you. Red Seal Ale. Really? Mendocino mm -hmm. County. Uh, North Coast Brewing. Really? I've mean, had a lot of North Coast. I didn't know about that one. 16 oh, the years Red old. Seal? Yes, I didn't say the 16 Bale years Ale? old, yeah. The Bale Ale? Yeah. It's like a deep ruby, like almost red ale, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that hop, there's a hoppy one, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. No, it's on him because I had a, I told you this, my very first craft beer was at Eck Creek and Beer from Berhaga. From where? Berhaga, like you know the people that make, you know, have you had the Duchess, the sour? Yeah, the Bourgogne, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Duchess of Bourgogne, like that one. Bourgogne, yeah, I think it's Bourgogne. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Um, my buddy from, from the, his dad, his, they're Dutch, and he went back home, I was like, this was like 2002. Oh my God. And, uh, you know, and, and he brought this beer back, and it was like, dude, I have this beer that tastes like cherries. I was like, what? And then, uh, and that was the very first like craft beer I ever had. He brought a four pack. I remember he's like, and you see it, it's like this, this red like four pack with like cherries on it, tall like twelve ounce bottles. That was a very first. That was a very 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 first craft beer. Cause like I didn't know that there was anything other than like lager existed. Cause I don't, you know. Well, we're Latin. We only drink lager. Exactly. And we only drink like crappy like. The one that got me hooked, and this is once again at a young age. I think it was sixteen. It might have been. Might have been earlier, but like Fat Tire Man. Fat Tire Man. I mean, a massive really? push into Texas, and I say massive, massive at the time. Everything's relative, but like to the point where like an Italian restaurant that my parents owned had it in bottles. Like what? Fat Tire. And this is when they had like, dude, the, like the label had an inflatable like inner tube on it. Like I, I think if you look up Fat Tire 1998 label, it'll come up. And that just like got me hooked, and that was before they went to like the classic like. You know, Belgian countryside look with a sunshine wheat and the fat tire. Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking, I was like, man, Fat Tire Brewing Company is my favorite brewery. And I had actually gone to Fort Collins to go look at Colorado State, thinking that I wanted to go do, you know, be a brewer for life and whatever. And I go over there and I, I call, you know, what was 411 back then? We didn't have Google, we didn't have internet on our phones. Yeah. 
And they were like, I was like, yeah, can I have the number for Fat Tire Brewing Company? And they were like, what? Like, no way, New, Bel- New Belgium? And then, like, I think the lady corrected me, and I was like, it's New Belgium. I'm like, oh. oh. So I ended up I going like, there. I was, I was like, yeah, so we, so we ended up okay. going there, and then, like, you know, proverbial boner got bigger <laughs> when I went there, and I knew it was There's it. What's wrong with that? Right? Yeah, I knew it was it after that. You know, so. the funny thing about it, there's no way you would have known that. No way I would have known your life story. The first picture I had for the, the, the podcast, the first picture I had for Dallas Beer Talk is me drinking a fat tire. Hey, man, I will still drink a fat tire. I will. I love that brewery. I, I love that I've brewery. I've never been. I mean, like, look, they're big brewery, whatever, dude. I've never been. I don't care. The beer's so good. They're so great. Yeah, what's wrong with being a big brewery? It's about what people associate big brewery is not local and not quality. That's what people associate with big breweries. Now, that's all relative. That's all relative. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with selling more to the masses, but also yeah, beers, beers, beers. I mean, if your beers are still good, people won't know. Like that. We just, that sour we just had is, a, is delicious. Yeah. It's fucking delicious. And they're big. They're only in Wisconsin. They've denied yeah. everyone else, any other state, from taking their stuff. They've done it right. Hey. It's an amazing that. beer, dude. It's so good. That's what I'm saying. I need to take a picture of that so my friend in Florida so can find it. If they can find it. No, you're find definitely. It. New Blair's is not in Florida. It's, it's not, not in Florida? No. I'm not even going to send a picture then. I am not uh, going to yeah. torture them. Bro, that beer is so good, though. God. That one's definitely uh, probably some trade bait out there. I don't trade beers, but that's I used to. That beer was like one. back in the day. That was like that was like some hot, hot, hot commodity. I'm pretty sure people still want it. Listen, I trade beers all the time with local. Listen, no offense to Justin King. I'm not a big fan of Justin King. I don't like any of their beers, but I appreciate them for who they are and their facility. It's beautiful. Uh, I don't see my favorite thing about them is that like they make the beers that they like. Yeah, and it's worth for them. I know. Good on them. Right? I don't like you know them. I mean? I'm not the customer they want to sell to. So I, I just always be honest. I'm not a big fan of their beers, but people like them. Uh, Austin love them, and people outside of Texas love them. So I that's my trade. That's my trade beer of choice. I always go down, get a beer from them, and trade it. hundred percent. Great beer, dude. Like I said, and like look, they don't care. They like make like I said. My favorite thing about them is they make the beer they like. You know, they're they living off the land too. But they, but they know their audience. Yeah. Too, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not the customer, so they don't, they don't, they don't sweat it. I'm not the uh, desired customer anyway. But they sell a shit ton anyway to the customers who love them anyway. So fuck it. No, like I said, they know their audience, and them. they make beer for their audience, and people love it. You know, and good on them because they've been, they've been very successful. No facts, but uh, I know you've been. We've been doing this for two plus hours now. So, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so food, let's, let's, let's gently wrap this up. Sure. Uh, what I would say is. What, what what should we what should we suspect as consumers coming forward uh, coming from the future of Three Nation besides the new brewery? Any new beers we should be on the lookout for? Well, okay, so we've pretty much come to a conclusion. We ran numbers. I, I looked at it personally this afternoon. It's like when you're brewing half the amount of stout as you are as your number one core brand, you're making the same amount of money stout year round no doubt about that so variant the hell out of it can the hell out of it uh, when it gets hot golden stout variants when it gets cooler outside uh, you know dark stout variants haze is not going away i think uh right now we've kind of gotten this sweet spot where haze is like you know we do 60 barrels of it and it's gone and you know two weeks later we brew another batch and you know, it, it, get, it goes pretty quickly, but I think we can get to a point where it's like, especially being able to sell beer to go, Hayes will become like, you know, double down on that. Nice. I think uh, Joby's beer is gonna end up being doubled down on because right now there's not a whole lot of shelf space for it with GPA still on the shelf. That'll go away eventually. And, and, she made it and you know, the hazy pale ale is not going anywhere. And then it's just like, man, I want to get to a point personally where, you know, we'll still date code everything we do. That's what we want to do, but like, Get to a point where it's like, hell, man, you date code this stuff, and the distributors picking it up the, the, the evening after you canned it, and hopefully, uh, you know, it's gone within, uh, you know, seven days or we ten make, days or something keep like that. that people enjoy, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, we make beers like, I mean, we we certainly enjoy it. You know what I mean? And it's like GPA is like going away in a can, but yeah, you can still go to like. Get any of your favorite growler plays, you know what I mean? Any of those guys, and it's like, you know, because it's like, I know that's my beer choice. 
I still, I mean, and, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but like, like, or you've noticed, but like, the West Coast like IPAs are like coming back, and like, you know, I'm an OG like West Coast IPA kind of guy. I love Stone Ruination. I love Green Flash. I love I IPA, that. You know, but it's like a, but an, I don't know if that's an actual comeback or like people. I are think just, it is. What? Yeah. I have to cut you off, but what this two things is coming back. Hillsmeyer's West Coast IPAs. Yeah, cares. well, I mean, in GPAs, like, if you love West Coast IPAs like I do, like, that's a beer you can drink all day. You know what I mean? So it's like, going forward, like, yeah, you know, Hayes isn't going anywhere. We're going to still, still making, like, kick-ass Hayes beer. Facts. Like, you know, Joby's beer, still awesome. If you haven't tried it, try it. You get, like, promise, great cool beer. Great cool beer. Yeah, you know, Some and then, uh, but uh, but yeah, you know, like we're excited to make beers that like people like to drink, or you like to drink, and then like we're also really excited to make beers that like when we have the when we have the, the palate system, we can make all the weird stuff we want, you know. Did you come here? I like that too. Is there any events that a that I should be aware of so I can help support it? Or well, tomorrow, like I said, like, like I said earlier, tomorrow the uh, growlers. Up in the, the shacks of the colony, have an adoption event, have some dogs over there. Uh, Mark from Paws in the City is going to come support, bring a couple of his dogs. And that should be a good time. He's on Russ Martin's show right now, by the he's way. On the, yeah, he's yeah. on the Russ oh, Martin shit. show. Every nice. Friday, yeah. Every Friday. And then, uh, yeah, he's, we'll start tomorrow at 3, hang out, we'll have some t-shirts, t-shirts to sell, Three Nations beer on tap. Should be fun. The video will be out, uh, I'm going to cut the part right here. Uh, the video will be out. Early as 8 a.m. tomorrow, will be out. Oh, wow! Uh, for that promotion, for that thing. I told you I'll, I'll make it out. I'll, I'll yeah. make sure I make it out. So That's I just awesome. got to transfer it and put yeah. it together. That one, and then next weekend, uh, Katie Trail Outpost will have another adoption event. Hang out with them. Oh, so it's back to back, two events. Nice. Yeah, you know, we'll have like Saturday, this Saturday, and then the following Saturday. Yeah. Like, hang, out, hang out with them. That should be a good time. Well, the perspective on tab. Come try it if you haven't tried it. It's good. It's a great beer. It's a great beer. So uh, we, we, I will be there support it. Tomorrow is a heavy day of things going on. You got Funky Picnic opening up tomorrow. You oh, have yeah. OHB's anniversary tomorrow. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You have uh, Three Flights Tacos having a private bottle share tomorrow. Really? Also, yeah. You also have another dog adoption out at Fort Brewery happening tomorrow. So people, why, how I know all these things. I do a Thursday event. Uh, every Thursday, I look for weekend events, and I call it Beer Weekend Updates. So if you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you see Beer Weekend Updates. So if I can't find you something, I, I haven't. I didn't see that event for Three Nations. I don't know if you made a, a page for it's it. It's on Facebook. I, if you don't mind sharing that with me, or any event you have in the future, so I can make sure I talk about it. Absolutely. Uh, because I looked up breweries, beer events, drink events, craft beer events and I did not see that. No, it's definitely it's definitely in there like but um, yeah I can share. Well I had the same problem. I I lucky enough went in there or ran into Roman last night and he was telling me about Christmas in July. And I looked it up yesterday and I didn't see Christmas in July at Tabs and Caps. But I just so happy to be like, yeah hey, hey we're gonna buy Tabs and Caps today to make a drinking video. Like, I'll be there and he told me about it so we did a prompt two video. So we could promote it. For sure. And he was like it should have been up there. I didn't see, I don't know how Facebook works, but I didn't find it. But if you don't mind, just update me and I will share it. Because I, I want to do that with forward, updating people in the craft beer community about beer events every weekend. So I'll make sure to do it this week tomorrow. And I'll also make sure to do it next weekend about the... Uh, Love it, dude. Yeah, for sure. you be there. No, no, no. First of all, I know you got to go. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for hanging dude, out. thanks for coming out. Thanks for sharing that beer. That was delicious. That was, thank you for sharing that beer. I have not had yep. one of those in a while. That was really good. I forgot how strong they were. Uh, that was That's insane. still uh, really, really good. That was That's insane. Great. But, guys, thank you so much, brother. Thank you, man. Good appreciate it. Thanks for awesome. Hang out again. Hey, thanks, Rodrigo. I'm so happy it finally <laughs> happened, bro. Like, I've seen you, like, I see you everywhere. Bro, we see you at every event. Yeah. And yeah. we talk about this. When are we doing the podcast, man? We made oh, it. Oh, man. We, we made, made it. it. See, man. Thank you so much. And it was, a, it was a really organic conversation. We didn't have a structure to it, but I really appreciate you guys coming out. Because we appreciate I love you. you guys. I love you guys. You know. Likewise, and I want dude. more people Likewise, to support you guys. So, so yeah. excited about it. And then, uh, I can't wait for more. Well, we'll, we'll do another one when we open up. Definitely. definitely. Well, I'll be there for opening day. Listen. Exactly. There's, there's three people. <laughs> 
three people. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> There's three people I promise I'll be here for today. Manhattan Projects, Paul Seidel, and you guys, Three Nations. The only people Boom. I promise to be there. All right? Dude. Yeah. I'm yep. gonna hold you to it. No, I promise. I'll be there. Yeah, we'll, we'll if, wait, you know, if opening things on Thursday, I'm taking a day off of work on Friday. That's it. Boom. Boom. Done. That's it. So, yeah, it'll sure get guys, messy if it's not on Thursday. If it is on Thursday, you're fucking a lot of weeks up. <laughs> a lot of people week up. But on that note, guys, thank you so much for watching. Just follow uh, Three Nations on social media Three Instagram, guys, Facebook. Three Nations Brewing anywhere. Anywhere, social media, Twitter, all that. Also, don't drink and drive, take a lift, be careful, and come support. Love you guys. Peace. Cheers. Yes. Love it. That was awesome. So great.